There's right. this Professor no Dongache is a dean, the investor of Capo Business School. He's joined us. Um, we're just going to get two comments from him. Then he moves back to uh, his um, main duties at the university. Now, uh, good morning to you. I just wanted to get an insight. Let's say, which I know is the case, and also uh, corroborated by many um, academics who have um, looked at the PCPEC, uh, current agreement with the IMF. Let's say we agreed with the IMF that these are the options we are putting before the table. And so, because this is a prerequisite, we need to introduce these tax handles to raise the needed revenue to be able to uh, <coughs> fully implement our PC PEC. And now, there's agitation by labor, general worker groups, ordinary consumers, that will be the ordinary Ghanaian. Um, what would be the alternative then Ghana can present to the IMF, or the impact, if we just wholly say we're stopping these tax handles. Professor Jongachi. Thank you. Uh, I think we need to discuss it within context. Okay. Uh, unless we want to say that the IMF, per the agreement, they become the managers of our economy. What happens normally uh, is that uh, proposals will be put on the table where the government will want to uh, increase revenue or expand revenue handles. Those will be proposed. If he sits well with the IMF, uh, then he agrees. So the moment we are creating the impression that is the IMF who comes and tell us that we should use 15% uh, VAT or electricity, then it seems that we are shifting the blame. Uh, so I don't see it that way. I see that it's the government of Ghana who mm -hmm. has gone through the book and they have realized that, oh, in 2013, there was an attempt to introduce VAT on electricity and it was enacted into law. But in the wisdom of those who enacted that into law, they realized, they realized that that would be disruptive, that would create chaos, that would put burden on households, uh, etc. So they couldn't uh, implement it. So we have seen that uh, we are on the IMF program. General difficulty will be uh, the experience. So why can't we bring this task on board? And the IMF also look at it and say, well, if you can convince your countrymen uh, for this to be implemented, why not? So I think that the approach that we have to go to the IMF to agree with the IMF before uh, implying that if the IMF doesn't agree, then the task will go ahead to be applied. Mm. Uh, meaning that uh, it is not us, it is the IMF. It is a total uh, uh, neglect of the duty of managers of the country and shifting blame. Mm. Now, Professor Jongachi. Mm. Have you ended? Can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Did you end? Yes. Okay. So then, if that is your deductions, you are saying that our fate is, a, is in our own hands. If that is the overall consideration or the observation you make, what are the options left for governments then in terms of trying to make sure that that loophole in the absence of non-implementation or deployment of this or these tax handles to make sure we meet the targets, not only based on the proposal we put before the IMF, but also the, our own annual targets for, for the period? Who, who determined the annual target? What was the consideration for the annual target? So if a task handle cannot be applied, mm -hmm. you only revise your entire expectation. That is the right thing to do. But to put us in a situation <laughs> as though if that task target is not achieved, then something so bad is going to happen to the economy. I think that is trying to blackmail all, all of us into difficulties. So the right thing to do is for government to revise 
uh, its task expectation, and for that matter, the budget overall. Mm. So now that the workers are agitating, general consumers and then um, the general public is raising concern, it means that um, definitely there was a problem. Well, we, ne we really have to, have to collect money right, or revenue or taxes. So what alternatives are there for government? So do you think that we're not collecting taxes? <laughs> do oh, you think that... Uh, no, we, we do. We do, actually. <laughs> We do actually. Yeah, so we have been collecting that. It's only that you want to add more. They, think they don't want it. Labor unions are up in arms. So you need to revise that expectation. So that is what government is supposed to do. And over the years, whatever government brings, uh, they believe that at the end of the day, uh, it will stand. And you, the media, also help government, uh, present government as if that is the final thing that it can do. If they don't do that, something precarious is going to happen. And you blackmail all of us into accepting uh, what the government is, is supposed to do. A sensible government, if you put a task handle, haven't we seen tasks task withdrawn in this country before? Didn't we see VAT when it was introduced in 1995? Uh, with all kind of agitation had to be reduced, uh, uh, withdrawn, uh, recalibrated before it was brought back in 1998. We have seen that before. Mm. So what is so strange when you, when you want to introduce tasks and the people are not happy and then you are you're putting the blame on IMF. Uh, in, in your earlier discussion in the studio, some government communicators say that, oh, this task was on the book long time. All that the, the, the government is doing is to implement it. Do you know why the people, the, those who enacted the law didn't implement it? It's because of the same sensitivity we're discussing today. So if you are not sensitive to the people and you bring in this task, don't be blaming IMF. Okay. Uh, th th there's a, a conversation around the table and of course, uh, Dr. Stephen Amoa uh, moots this whole principle that even though the principle of moving Ghana from taxation to production is a laudable one, we've had exigencies of the times. So Russia, Ukraine, we've had COVID, supply chains were affected across the world, Ghana inclusive, many countries are still recovering, etc., contributing either partly or largely, um, he says, to what we're facing. And so we should be on the straight uh, and narrow where we have a general principle, both sides of the political divide and all sectional sections of the economy or the country, that um, we should leave politics aside and make sure that we say we produce what we eat and then we grow what we can and not be politicking on some of these issues. How does it work within the sphere of the economy and then in the academia when you do the observation of, of policy implementation? Unfortunately, the reality is that uh, uh, taxation in particular is part of political discussion. Uh, it's, it's a core issue in political economy. So you cannot introduce taxation and people will not discuss it from various angles, including politics. So that is one. So has it been the case when taxes were introduced in the past? So this cannot be a, a special moment. Uh, in the in the past, when taxes were introduced, uh, were we having problem that uh, as I see yes. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, prices of those commodities have reduced significantly. Mm. Uh, you have a big problem on hand. So those days where taxes were introduced were complaining, were also time of problem. Just at this time, it's also time of problem. So there's no difference okay. at all. all right. It's only names that have changed for the problem. So you are, you are, you're mentioning Russia and Ukraine war. Even that one is very questionable. Then we are making uh, coverage. Yeah, these are all problems. 
so if one problem this uh, this period uh, should be accommodated then why was not uh, 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 taxes tax issues accommodated when there was another type of problem of the country so we just have to manage our affairs uh, uh, to reflect that we are in challenges uh, and then cut our coat according to our size mm. and ensure okay. that we are prudent uh, in, in managing the, the revenue resources that we have for the country. All right, thank you very much. The Dean of the University of Cape Coast Business School, Professor uh, John Gachi, joining us um, just to have these uh, in, uh, explanations and additions to the conversation. So, uh, Conlan Williams says, well, how different are pollution and sanitation levies from emission levies? Uh, this government is, is just using semantics um, to duplicate taxation. But I, I think the general principle is that we have to make sure that we reduce expenditure. Uh, Moses Bedi particularly sends me, he says, uh, as a colleague chartered accountant, I know Dr. Amwa, Dr. Amwa, you're an accountant, right? I'm a finance-based. Okay, finance -based. Which, of course, accounting is. Accounting is. Uh, them, yeah. I know Dr. Amwa knows that under these circumstances, the best thing to do is to have cut down substantially on expenditure, especially when we are not repaying most of our loans. Why is he not rather advising government to do that instead of rather uh, justifying tax increases and spending? Not, uh, 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 how, how do we sit with this? It means we don't have enough time. And one thing is, Roland, when one speaks, people just pick dimensions and twist it. Mm. <laughs> I mean, we've been asking for cutting down expenditure for how many years now? All the years. All the years. And then DC and the MPP, even when we're not having problems with our fiscal space. I'm not saying we shouldn't pay tax or we should pay taxes or taxes shouldn't be debated politically. How can you have a government policy that you say politically? No, that's not what I meant. What I'm saying is that whether the taxes be introduced or implemented are so much needed to consolidate our fiscal space for mm. the good purpose of our country or not. Mm -hmm. When NDC guys are in power, mm. MPP will come, go all out. When NDC, MPP is in power, NDC will go all out, and then the other stakeholders will pick. And in my opinion, it's not bringing the constructive debate that will move this country forward. I think this is extremely something good that nobody should trust it, unless you don't love Ghana. I am making this point because tax policy is calibrated in nature. So sometimes we should allow people... Look at how Prof is talking. Mm. You know he understands what he's talking about. Yeah. I may agree or disagree to some of the things he said, but you know that it's his area. But we have a country that people do not even understand it. All that they know is I'm MPP. NDC is in, government is introducing this task. I will fight it because I want to come to power and vice versa. This is what I am talking about. And even cutting that expenditure. I also, who says this I don't need cutting? The government cut about 30% of yeah, our budget yeah, yeah. You remember? That's what they said, yeah. Whether that was impactful or not. I even went further to make, sorry, to make <coughs> statements that if I wasn't even careful, my own people would handle me wrongly. Those who think I'm too, sometimes too Straight neutral. Straight and narrow, yeah. The point I'm making is that what are the models or policy devices put in place, whether by NDC and PP, to make sure that the cutting down of expenditure does not also impact GDP, so that will impact people's life. In elsewhere, we should be able to run, I mean, regression analysis, time series analysis, and select items that we can even totally cut them away because they don't impact GDP. Okay. And those that have very strong correlation with our GDP, we encourage them. Do we do that? Or MPP wants to cut, NDC wants to cut, or pressure this. There is a mechanization process that we use to manage our fiscal space. These are technical areas that if we don't stop unnecessary politics or politicking, Roland, hey, MPP will go, NDC will come, MPP will go, NDC will go, MPP will come, will be the same story. So my point is that we could all do politics. When my brother was saying that we waste the money and in my constituency, all is not well with us. But, yes, but the things this government and the Nanado has done, I have a book I bring you, you go and check whether it's not true. So moving from what, what's, your, what's your point with your constituency thing? 
My point, like roads are being constructed as never before. We said that probably. Okay, so your argument is that I'm we need coming. to provide Almost social services. Almost all the secondary schools that have been provided with computers, I'm not saying they are enough. About 2,400 school children have certain, I mean, facilities. We provided security cards. We put up first class judges, whatever residents that in Ghana have never seen. We put up a court, we put up hospital. So what I'm saying is that there are issues with the way we spend. There are worse stages, if I want to be honest, whether government A or B. But the point that I'm making is that do we introduce tax or reduce taxes just for the fun of it or for the policy of it? Or when we <coughs> analyze our fiscal space, government needs, statutory demands, the needs of the people. Do we need more money internally? Yes. Do we still have to go on and borrow? How much have you already borrowed? If that is too much, we need to concentrate on generating taxes. And then the next phase is, are we using the taxes, the money we get judiciously productive? There's also another area. What do you think? I, I, I think we have a lot to do as a country, whether party A or B. I think we need to manage okay. corruption and excesses as a country. Okay, because so, it's not only so, MPP so, so, and DC so do you, that are corrupt. Do you advise um, government on this? On what? Well, we all speak about it. It's not only government. It, it, and all government, look, if Nanado wasn't having the will, to fighting corruption, whether he is successful or not, is another issue for people to discuss. I don't think he would have set up this uh, OSP. OSP and put in place a leading NDC member. You understand what I'm saying? Sometimes, let's all be honest. I don't, there are, I don't understand. You oh, mean Martin Amido? Exactly. If I, me, you think I'll, but, put, but, up, but, I'll put up but a Martin leader. Martin under his own government, uh, so to speak, went so, round. Whichever people. way. It's because of for, his principle. For, no, exactly. For somebody to say that I'm using this two to fight corruption. And you go and bring Kofi Adams, or Kofi Adams go and bring me under his government. It means that the, the will is there. But as sometimes, too, it doesn't only take former President Mahama or His Excellency Nanado Danko alone. Let's face it as a country. Okay. All stakeholders in a democracy. Look, Mr. let me give this scenario, then my brother comes in. Now, if we want to fight corruption, which is very key in wasting our money and even controlling our revenue and using it for the right purpose, we are in <coughs> democracy. Now, if I am Basin State fan, Nanado can't just call a jail sticker. There will be prosecution. The police people that are doing prosecution, not all of them, but generally, what happens in our country? You see some of them even taking money on the roadside. Some of the judges could also take money weekends and keep on adjoining the cases. I, I don't understand. You are oh, saying that you don't understand. Uh, no. What I'm saying is that... At the, end, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. Dr. Um, Stephen Amwa, mm -hmm. the reason why we well, elect okay. leaders is to make sure that all around, they try to restructure Thank the you. state you and, then, and then, and then there's a word. state of accountability. Thank you for your word. No, you take care of it. You try. But what yes. I'm saying is that you try. when you're dealing with a whole country, mm. that when you're fighting corruption, yeah. it's not an Adu or Mahama that can push or press the button or trigger anything and say, just jail somebody. There's a process that due involves process. other... Process. When the accusation that they do process... Can you allow me a bit for me no, to... But they, uh, okay. Roland. When Roland. people are talking, no, conclude, you conclude. saw what you told the professor. Are you, have you landed? Then he comes in. But you, when I'm talking, okay, please. you just want to please. come in, then you, I, you, I throw away my... I apologize. My order, I your, want to your line of thought. The point that I am making is that if you want to fight corruption in this country, there are other key relevant stakeholders along the chain. We are in democracy. Why do we have separations of powers? Judiciary, legislature, and the executive. So when it comes within the judiciary, I'm not saying they are not doing well, the police people, they are not doing well. And you have people who along the chain are putting up dysfunctional, socially unacceptable behaviors that are impairing the progress, effectiveness, efficiency, and how we should solve these problems. And they are putting up behaviors that are putting us back. It is very difficult. It's not as straightforward as you think. So I am calling for every Tom, Dick, and Harry, all relevant stakeholders along the chain. You know, the professor says something I agree most, which I, I will put it, redefining our corporate focus as a country. Fundamentally, there are problems. Everybody should position himself or herself, come on board, change his mindset, and let's build this country out of collectivism. But if we uh, keep on saying because somebody is in power, A, B, C, D, then Rula. trust me, it will be the same story. Let me just you, you make up your mind. It will be the same story. The, the clarion call from um, everybody on this table is that we've come to the point where, well, we have a democracy. The, we have um, the chains of organizations that need to work to make sure in tandem 
the main objective of cutting down costs, achieving that, and then those who tend to flout all financial regulations are punished, etc. So sometimes they are ineffective and at least to that. In addition to that, for example, I, I picked this, and, and Eric, thank you for sending me this. It, um, founding member of policy think tank, Imani Africa, Frank Kujo, for example, says, all the arguments are good. By slamming government for introducing taxes, when, uh, when we have the bloating of governments in terms of the numbers and the pairs, whether it's a civil service or is a exactly what we are talking about. Because it says that you need to pick the things and make you sure see, you cut them. Do you remember when we raised issue about the numbers in government and presidential stuffers? What did the president told us? He said he's in a hurry. Oh, that I mean, he's. He's, yes, like said, please, no, please, no, no, please, please. When you were talking, boss, no, please. You said a lot of things that, please. You said a lot of things that I disagree. I disagree with you, but I kept quiet. Stop I'm saying you. Let's do you please. Very healthy look, analysis. Let's, stop let's, this. Let's, 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 stop that. Be disciplined. We want to do, but behave yourself. I'm saying that. Stop saying all this. Look, no, 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 if we no. want to do politics, why end this? Can you change? Doctor, could Doctor, you have Dr. 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 Dr.
But he thought of a country and said, let me merge information ministry with communication that will reduce size of government. Let me keep transport ministry to deal with all the transport related issues. That was where we saw expansions in our seaports. We saw expansion in our airports. We saw the expansion in our real development. Tell me when we separated and created aviation ministry, what did we benefit from? When we created railway development ministry alone, we were taking money John Mahama established to give to funny companies. That was what we were doing. So the separation, the many apparatchikis that they have taken who are paid are not doing any job. And that is what we are saying that government must first start by cutting size. When government takes that initiative and reduce size and make savings, and now you are beginning to demand from others to also sacrifice same, then they will be willing to hear you. But you don't introduce taxes on erasers, taxes on exercise books, taxes on what? Uh, calculators, and so on and so forth. In which year tax, smoke tax, emission tax, and you come and sit here and tell us that this is what we must do. Look, labor is not a political party. Labor is demanding that government have taken their tier two continually for more than eight months and they have not released those monies. Many of their persons have gone on retirement and they are dying because monies are not being released. So labor is challenging. Why is government not releasing it? Because government is wasting money, paying all kinds of phony deals. And I gave you an example of SML, where what MPA is already doing, you go and take another company that come and do this and be paid 24 million Ghana city. Then it didn't end there. Now they've added them that every barrel of crude that is exported, you are going to be given $0.75. Every ounce of gold, you are going to be given $0.75. This company alone is raking more than $1 million, uh, $100 million per annum for virtually doing nothing. Doing nothing. Then you sit here and say that that poor worker who is already suffering, should be made to pay taxes on his or her electricity consumption. That person should be made to pay emission tax. That person that should be I made say. to pay this tax I or that tax. That. Please, I'm not saying you, you, see, you as... Uh, you please, as, please. You as, you as, he's oh, making a submission. Allow him to Are you, are you, no, are you no, government? No. But have I said are you government? No. <laughs> are you government? I'm saying I haven't said that. Look, before. and they make claims. <laughs> I've heard persons say that, yes, the law on this 15% tax on uh, uh, electricity consumption by domestic users was passed in 2013. That's true. That's bad. Uh, the Act 870. But this very government have had opportunity in 2019 to amend the VAT Act. And they still kept that provision, meaning that they saw the good in it and kept it. They should not be making reference to what was passed in 2013 and was never used. They had opportunity in 2019 when they passed the, the VAC uh, the 1005 yeah. Act. They have the opportunity to have removed it. They did not. So stop introducing John Dramani Mahama into so the, into the equation. It? We told them so why did you introduce that it? they needed to, one, cut government size and make savings. They refused. We told them you needed to stop the unnecessary borrowing that you are not putting it into productive areas. If they did what the NDC did, for example, in Which is investing what? part of the CDB facility, the almost $1 billion into the gas processing facility, which today has paid for itself and helping Ghana save over $300 million every year. Such investment is what we call productive investment. What about take or pay? Today, take or today. Pay. Uh, do you remember Answer the saying? Copy. Do you remember the saying that <laughs> in the midst of no, asking, no, let good. him make it. Uh, uh, Roland, you he said him. that when you ask him question, he loses his story. But I love questions. So ask you him see, in the midst of plenty, when we are told that we have <laughs> excess capacity, we are suffering doom. So, do you remember the saying that in the midst of plenty, the fool is what thirsty. So when you have persons who cannot think around. At the time they are telling you there's excess capacity, we will still be suffering doom so. We will still be suffering doom so. So if he's asking me about take or pay,
today as we speak, his government, they are still signing take or pay policies. It's a common thing in the energy industry. The take or pay is a common thing. Today, his government, the MPP, that is still in government and talking about take or pay as a bad thing. They are still signing agreements that are worse off, that are even higher, that includes the clauses of what? Take or pay. But they come and sit on air and speak as if take or pay is a bad thing. It's never a bad thing. It's an industry thing and it will continue to happen. It will not end. That is why mm -hmm. I will not criticize MPP for signing a take or pay energy agreement. Because it's not bad. But my worry is that in the midst of plenty, when they say we have excess power, we are still suffering doom. So in the Bible, they say it is only a fool that go test when there's plenty of what? water. And clearly, this government has lived that example that is stated in the Bible. If there's one advice you give organized labor, what would it be? Well, the organized labor should keep up. Because you're a member of parliament, you do agree and that if they that, go on demonstration, well, decrease agitation. If you look at the parliamentary handsets, what labor is talking about today, we raise them in parliament. In all our debates, in all our debates about the introduction of taxes that people complain about later, that even government itself found out that they have wasted all our time, we have raised them before. The only thing is that they don't listen. How do you continue to keep a government that don't listen? They do things, worsen the situation, come back and say, oh, we didn't think well. Where was cabinet? The very same cabinet that met again and saying that they are now taking a decision to withdraw, to possibly withdraw the 15%. The uh, question is, uh, is it a good thing or not to withdraw? Of course, that was why we asked them not to even put it. That was why all previous administrations before them have not done it. You are saying because it shouldn't even be a policy good. in the first place. It's not good. If, okay. if you look at it, the ECG manager, mm. I'm told, is granted interview somewhere. Said, well, yes, clearly, so that's public knowledge. They do not have any infrastructure to be able to what, even implement that. He again said that because of continuous power outages today, he is unable to attend public events. Look, I agree with uh, this man, uh, Mr. Uh, Alan Tremantin, when he said, the government economic messiah is tired. He lack ideas. Who are you talking about? Dr. Dr. Baumia. He cannot bring any change again. The only thing he understands now is taxation and taxation and taxation and taxation. Oh. He really have no new ideas again. He ah. is finished. He is done. When the previous administration took decisions and invested appropriately, and in the 2015 report of Economic and Intelligence Unit that was released in 2016, they made those predictions right that in 2017 through to 2018, Ghana's economy was going to grow. It was going to boom and it was going to grow not less than 7%. Not because of the decisions that will be made by any party that will win the 2016 election. Oh, but the, but, but because, we have, we have please, please, economic please listen to me. Please listen to me. This, <laughs> was, this was prediction. For me. Listen, this was prediction that they made in their 2016 report that it will not depend on the decisions that will be made in 2017 or 2018 by the party that will win the 2016 election. But because of positive decisions that have been made in the past, that's 2015, right. 2014, 2015, 2016. When the year started coming, Dr. Baumia came out and said, they have arrested the dollar, locked it, and handed the key to the IGP. Today, after having had four years and another four years, where is the dollar? Where is the dollar? Kofi Adam, Dr. Severamwa, thank you very much as well. Imelda Nassar says, Roland Walker, who is moderating the show? I am, please. And then uh, Money Ni Money says, this is what happens when policies and Campaign promises meet. The reality will always expose you. Uh, Mona, also good morning to you. Now, um, Kwesi Boating says he's given us this message from Kwadaso. Okay. We are tired of politics of take or pay contracts and its arguments. The reality is something good has also been done by the MPP government. So we shouldn't have all the criticisms coming as always yeah, that, know. yeah. Okay, okay. So, and then we have a couple more messages. So, um, Atukwe Kwe says, what the MPP government promised us are 
the opposite exactly of what they are doing. Kofi chapter says, CD exchanging at four Ghana cities to the dollar was deemed to be incompetence. What do we describe what's happening today where the CD is over 12 Ghana cities? We have to be sincere in our politics. It is good, Dr. Stephen Amwa is saying we all have to be patriotic. All right. Salim Adam says today, Mr. Bento is asking everyone to give Baumia a fair hearing. Is a fair hearing a response to the 170 questions posed to the late Vice President Emis Arthur? Let me just read a couple more. Um, also on the console, and then we'll take uh, a leave this morning. Uh, this one is coming from Lord Kofi, who says, The pension for wasteful spending by government is too loud. When you're in difficulty, it is basic knowledge in finance and economy that you revise your expenditure to accommodate the exigency of the problem. Just look at the budget that is always read, and you will get to know. Now, Blueprints, Blueprints from the Western region, uh, says from Esikado Kitang, says good morning to uh, incoming member of parliament, uh, Esikado Kitang, Honorable Charles Bissu. The reality is Nanado Danko Ekufuado has shown leadership by listening to the calls from the grassroots to withdraw the controversial VAT on electricity. All right. And then we have uh, Nana Gazo. Nana Gazo, good morning to you. And then we have a couple more <coughs> as well. Now, Dr. Mahmoudia is never tired. Alan Chermantin is rather tired. That's why he quit the MPP. Master Planner Junior Kentampo. Now, let's do some cash out. We see... Uh, Kwesi Mensan from the U.S. says, have you seen what Dr. Steven Amwa is doing? He's disrupting the program. Now let's do cash out. Cash out. It goes uh, with a short code, star 439 hash. Now we'll do the draw now. So you choose the options. <coughs> you choose the options and let's do the draw. Let's do the draw, all right? As we wait for the draw, please let's also, um, so we're doing the draw. Three, two, one. The first winner for our first draw is the number 054631. Great one when it comes to cash out. Now, as it is, um, uh, as it is, so, so, all right. So we're taking a break. When we take a break and we come back, we'll bring you the rest. And this one is coming from Eric from Ashali Boche, who has said the hunter sees no difference between the alligator and the crocodile, therefore.